Welcome back, software engineers. So once you're done with your communication phase, you're going to start doing the planning part. Planning likewise is going to have multiple substages. We're going to look at a variety of these, not necessarily all these. It depends upon, of course, the type of project you're working on. We've talked about this before inside of class in our discussions and lectures. We're looking out for our project, which is, remember, a fairly simple project. Now, the first thing that I like to start off with is use cases. Now, use cases are not user stories. Those are two separate things. Use cases tend to be a little bit more technical. I like them for software engineering purposes because they provide a lot more information than a user story does. Now, it doesn't mean a user story doesn't have its place. It definitely does, and I use them as well. But I like when I'm doing a project, especially from scratch, and I'm building something early on to start looking at use cases. So I want to show you a couple different ways that we can use use cases. First and foremost is through something like Microsoft Word. There's nothing special about this form. I've just created a blank document and I have it as a template. This is something I can copy and paste to a new page, and I'll try to put one use case on a page. If it goes to a second page for some reason, then I'm going to leave the rest of that page blank and start my new use case on a new page. I like that just because it makes it very easy to work with. So what's in my template? Well, you can go online and find a lot of different templates. I'm going to show you the one that I'm currently using, which is I'm going to list what's the description of this use case. What is it we're trying to do? What steps do I need to perform in order to complete this task? Who's my primary actor? That is the person that's going to be using it. Now, every project is going to be different in who their primary actors are. In our case, what we're looking at is three main primary actors. That's going to be an HR person who's going to order this product and employees who are going to wind up using the product and reviewing other employees and their own manager, as well as probably a technical administrator, either from our company or from the HR company that's going to be responsible for doing things like uploading a spreadsheet of employees. We have secondary actors. These could be from our actor list. So maybe normally a technical admin might do a task but an HR person could also do it if they needed to. Now, depending upon the size of your project and the type of project, you might only have a single actor or you may have dozens. You need to clearly identify those during your research process. Next, and this is one of the reasons I really love use cases, is we talk about preconditions. Before this can happen, what needs to happen? So what happens if I want to go upload some content to the website? Well, I need to make sure that A, I'm already signed in and B, I've purchased this product. If I haven't done those two things, I can't upload the data for processing. It's a great example of a precondition. After our preconditions, I like to put the post conditions. That is what's going to happen when we're done. And we actually have two different post conditions. The first one is what happens if we were successful? So what happened? What did we do? And in our case, if we're uploading a spreadsheet of employees, we need to create interlinks so that each employee has the ability to observe and record their thoughts on another employee. Likewise, we're going to have a post condition of what if there was a failure? So what happens if our spreadsheet was corrupted or our data was not in the order it was expected to be in? These are serious problems that could affect the outcome of our product. And so therefore we're going to list those. Now, do you have to be in this same order? No. Could there be an additional stage in here? Maybe a use case ID number or a use case short name, that way you can look it up and put it into a digital product. Of course you could. In fact, let me show you a different use case scenario that's a little bit different than this, 
So this works really well. But here's a use case form using a Google form. Of course, you can use a survey monkey. You can use other things. I'm just using Google forms because most people have access to it with no additional cost. Now this takes all the same information. You can see all my different form fields. I have a description, who's my actor, my secondary actors, preconditions. I even have a trigger here. This is another field I might have. And I might want to put this up above my preconditions or I might want to have it below. But the trigger is what causes this to occur. It's an example of something that you may or may not have depending upon your use case. And finally, I can scroll down and see success and failures. And when I'm done, I hit submit. Now, why is this important? Well, this will go in and now store it in a Google Sheet. I can come over here to my form design and look at my responses. All this information is collected. I can see how many responses I have. That is how many use cases I've created. I can share this amongst team members so that they can work together. So they don't have to have the same document. They're all working together. And then I can take the sheet and then convert it into a Google Doc a Word document, something else that works for me. This is another tool I can use that winds up being very, very helpful for me. Are these the only ones? Of course not. In fact, you can go online and do a search for use case software and find specialized software. I even built a simple example within Softer, which is a no-code tool that allows me to create these and put in a spreadsheet similar to a Google Sheet. So however you choose to do it is up to you, but you need to make sure that you have a good and effective way. This is a great way that you can learn from and you can work from using something that's very easy to create. How long does it take to create a use case in a Google form? About five, maybe 10 minutes to create the form. And then it's only a couple minutes for each one to fill it out. How many do you need? Well, it depends upon the size of your project. Go back over your project requirements, see what people have asked for, and start building from there. I hope you found this useful. Our next video is going to be on user flow. That is, how does a user move throughout the application? So stay tuned for the next video coming up in our playlist.